This is Whispering Darling and today we're gonna do something a little different. We're going to do paper crafts together. Um, this is a gift from my spouse. We both don't drink coffee uh, for health reasons but we really love tea and um, it's a small gift that's affordable on a budget so what I do to make it look a little prettier is I made these um, tea sachet, sachet envelopes and I'm basically building those little tea sachet to look like this little tea pockets and you just put either loose tea or a little pocket in there I already made three of them because I made a set of six and I don't want to make all six on camera I think that could get a bit too repetitive but yeah I designed this and there's two page and it's completely free it's on my tumblr and you can print them if you want to do these I also made um, one blank version so if you just want to cut on your own paper something you find pretty can do that really easily. So, for this you'll need the printable, of course. I'm using a slightly thicker paper than the printer paper. I did test it on regular paper and it works. Um, I prefer a tiny bit more cardboardness to it because I feel like it holds the shape better. It's a bit more, a bit less flimsy. So you'll need that. You'll need um, an exacto or scissors, whatever you're more comfortable with. Um, I've been doing packaging with exactos for most of my <laughs> career in graphic design, so I feel more comfortable using this than a scissor. I can't cut straight with a scissor. It's pretty horrible. <laughs> um, so you'll need an exacto knife or a scissor. You'll need... this is my scissor and I'll be using it to make the more um, intricate part of the design. This is a ruler. I'm using this paired with the exacto to ensure a straight cut. And I prefer a clear one because I get to see where I'm at and I feel like I have better control of what I'm doing in the package. And then you'll need some glue. You can use something like this, a regular glue stick. It works fine. You, um, I would recommend if you use this to glue it together that you hold it for a few seconds on each side to ensure that it's extra strong. Um, I'll be using, personally, um, a rubber glue. Uh, any brand for both product, any brand will do. Um, I again, rubber glue is something I've been using for packaging, and I just find that it's a bit sturdier and stronger, and I want to make sure that these will keep their shape. And uh, that's just an extra precaution on my part. So let's start out by cutting these out using my plastic ruler and the exacto I'm also using um, the blue surface you're seeing as a cutting mat because since I'm not using scissor to do most of the cutting I don't want to harm my table in my workplace it's a nice flat surface
This is the sound the mat makes. It's a nice little tad instead of a sharp noise. I enjoy that. Let's get started. Always be careful of using scissors and exactos. I don't care what age you are. Please just be careful. I've been doing that for years and I still manage occasionally to cut myself. So just be careful. Better safe than sorry. So, HD Pocket is completely designed by me. It's royalty free. The only thing I ask is that you don't sell it, but you can use it for your own project completely, no problem. All the things I use for it are royalty free, um, including the fonts, and I made the... Illustration myself, using photos from the park. You know how much I love the park. Um, I've seen a wonderful museum exhibition where they use photos of many roses and they created a kaleidos <laughs> kale kaleidoscope effect. Sorry, that word always make me stumble. Uh, using the photo of the roses and I thought it was extremely striking and so I kind of did my spin on it using photos that I liked a lot from the park. Um, some of them you might be able to recognize what they are and some of them are a bit more abstract. I just love how vivid the color and geometric yet organic the shape ends up being. I also included um, little quotes and little saying and I'll read those to you in a few minutes. Personally, I find Project Light is very relaxing. Because it's kind of a methodical step-by-step -step project. I know where I'm going, I know what I'm doing. And on top of that, I'm making something pretty for someone I love, so... I'm also personally interested in um, how doing arts and crafts and creating something can help with um, problems like depression, mental illness like depression, and something that's very near and dear to me because uh, I deal with depression myself. and. I was watching this um, show on online on PBS called Craft in America and there is one episode in which um, a woman who does artisanal looming, she creates beautiful work, tapestries, mixing um, technology with handcraft parts and she's very interested in technology and science and she got approached by a study that are exploring how doing arts can affect the brain and what it means in a bigger scale and they wanted to um, tests what happened on her brain when she works on the loom and she was totally game and they put little sensors on her head and what they discovered is that when doing art, artists um, the p frontal part of their brain that controls solution making lights up and what's 
important about that part of the brain is that people that tend to have depression, for example, that part of the brain doesn't light up. It's completely closed off. And so it's still being researched, but what they're saying is that it could make a difference for people like that. And I'm inclined to believe that because one of the things that started working for me um, when I was dealing with the worst part of my depression, I've improved amazingly over the years. One of the first things I started doing was arts and drawing. And it took me a while, because at first I even didn't want to do it, even though it was something I used to love to do. And eventually, over time, it just made me feel better. I just, I looked forward to it, I wanted to do it. Um, anyway, I guess what I'm saying is, I'm very curious as where they're, they're going with that. And I think it's a fantastic idea. Now, for the next part on the tea pockets, we're going to do what's called scoring. You don't have to do it exactly like that, you can just fold if you feel comfortable. Again, <laughs> I'm really lousy at it, so I prefer to use my trusty ruler in Exacto. And I made these as simple to use as possible because I'm someone who gets um, a bit nervous over ambitious projects. And when I started graphic design, I didn't think I could do any of it. Um, I've always been terrible with my hand at creating 3D things. But over three years of education, I did manage to do it. Um, so basically, I made this as easy to use as possible. This bigger rectangle with the photo on it is your back um, on this project, for example. It's this section here. So what we're going to do is we're going to score on each side of that photo and we're going to fold and end up with, for example, this is the only fold that's not glued and you can see it's the front part here. So if you want to score the way I'm doing, I'm going to explain how that works. It's pretty sim simple, pretty straightforward. And you put your ruler lined up on the line that you want to score and with your exacto instead of using the sharp blade side you turn it around and use the dull side and what this does is that especially for a thicker paper but it works on um, softer paper as long as you're gentle is that it creates a very sharp um, line that's make the paper fold really easily. It's gonna make more sense since I do it. So just line it up. And for a thicker paper like this, I like to pass twice. So I'm going to show you right away what happens to the paper. Now I don't know if the camera's gonna pick it, but there's a bit of disturbance on the paper here and when we just it just folds completely straight and all we have to do is rub the seam just a tiny bit like that and this ensure that um, the product will keep a better shape over time if it's not used right away kind of thing so let's do all the other sides and then we'll cut out the more intricate part of the pattern. And we also will put it all together using the glue. All the quotes I found are historical quote. A lot of them are quite cheesy, and I'm okay with that because I'm offering them to someone I love, and it's 
is just as cheesy as I am. And I don't know, personally, when it's that cheesy, it just makes me laugh and smile. And that's kind of the goal of this gift. Like I mentioned earlier, this is a gift because we're kind of a tight budget. And I like to find small things, small activities, and little gifts that can be given that just makes the day nicer. It's not for every day, it's just a once in a while thing. And so, for me, printing and cutting this is pretty easy and inexpensive. And it makes it for a simple gift. I already have the material, I already have. All I need to do is a bit more time. Um, maybe you need to buy a bit of tea. And again, you don't have to buy the most expensive tea. You buy whatever you're comfortable with. Whatever you think the person's gonna like. Now, let's cut the flap and the opening. You could also make um, the flap a simple shape. I wanted to add that little extra pizzazz, so to speak, even though I'm not very good with scissors, as you probably can tell by how carefully I'm going. It won't be a perfect result, and I'm okay with that. There's lots of love and intention in there. And I think that that makes a difference, personally. So, I won't cut all the other ones on camera because I want to make a bit of nice noise with some of the items. And I also want to read you about the tea I got. And, well, essentially I want to show you the finished product. I get a little quiet when I cut. Again, it's that extra carefulness and attention. I might be a bit over cautious, but you know, better safe than sorry, like I said. So now that we are all done with this, I'm gonna glue it together using rubber glue. If you use rubber glue, Please work in an open arid side, <laughs> open space, lots of aeration. Ideally, do it outside or near a window because this smells pretty strong and over time it can become quite potent. <laughs> I found that out uh, in school the hard way. So, um, it can give pretty strong headaches and stuff like that. Just make sure there's air around. And this one is, most of them are sold in plastic container like this. Let's make a big noise with that. There's three different ways that you can apply this product, and they are written right here on the tag, and I'm going to read them for you. The first option is called dry mounting. This is uh, what we're going to use today. It's the most efficient one. Dry mounting has the most permanence. Coat both surface to the join to be joined and let dry. Align and place together. Don't press as little movement as um, is possible before drying. Burnish. If alignment is critical, use a slip sheet between coated surface. Dry rubber cement won't stick clean. Won't stick to clean paper. Wet mounting. Permits more alignment but does not have a permanence of dry mounting. 
apply to the sur to one surface only and position before cement dries. After alignment, bound may be improved by lifting one half at a time and then burnishing. The last one is called a combination of wet and dry mounting. Improve the wet mounting bound and allows some freedom of alignment. Coat one surface, let dry, then coat the other surface in position before cement dries. Excess or misplaced rubber cement remove easily when dry. This is what I really enjoy about this product is that the cleanups, if you make little misses and extras, is really simple. And, but as they say, you can't realign many times if you dry mount. So that's something to keep in mind. So I'm just gonna open this carefully. It makes a very strange wet sound when I rotate the lid like this close to the microphone. gooey sounding which makes sense as you'll see when I open this I don't know if the camera angle can pick it there we go it's quite sticky I always feel that the brush is enormous on these but it makes sense um, cement glue is often used for they call it cement or rubber glue it's often used for uh, big posters and larger scale things, but there's nothing um, wrong with using for something as small as this. You just have to be a bit more careful when you apply it if you don't want to make a huge mess everywhere. So I'll be using the dry method which means that I'm going to gently cover all the little side I need to glue together and we're going to let it dry and come back to it later to finish the assembly and during that time we'll talk about the tea I got and make some wonderful noise with a paper box that came in. So, as you see, I'm using a paper underneath because it is liquid and I'm trying to keep my uh, mat board as clean as possible. But I do want to stress that this is a really easy glue to clean. You just rub and it becomes this dry little crumble a bit like the closest I can think of is when an eraser has little crumbs of it it creates a similar effect so it's really easy to clean off from surfaces um, always make sure that whatever you use is on is compatible they always write what it can be bound to in the back just just be safe when you use new product okay so Let's put this aside. Now, I want to specify that I paid for this tea myself. It's not a sponsor. And I also want to say that I don't recommend it very much. Um, I tried the Earl Grey. And for me, the Earl Grey is the test one. If your Earl Grey isn't too great, it's such a basic tea that I'm suspicious of the rest. Um, but I did get what's called a um, Verity Pack. And I haven't tried the other flavor yet. It's by Mighty Leaf. I'm sorry if you do enjoy their tea. It's not bad tea. It's just very overpriced in my opinion. You pay mostly for the packaging. Um, the fact that they say that they are wrap in cellophane should have been the hint because most tea are wrapped in a metallic pocket because this preserve um, the quality of the leaf and this, the taste so let's make some noise with this box
So, let's read the different tea that this box contains. The first one, I'm on the French side, so I'm just gonna switch. There we go. The first one is Earl Grey Organic. Contains organic black tea leaves, essence of organic bergamot. The second one is organic breakfast. Contains organic black tea leaves. The third one is orange dulce. Contains organic black tea leaves. Green jasmine tea. Organic jasmine flower and natural flavors, which I'm gathering must be orange or bergamot flavored. The next one is organic spring jasmine, which contains organic green tea leaves, organic jasmine flowers. After that, there's the green tea tropical. Green tea leaves, corn flowers, marigold petals, pineapple pieces, and natural flavors. Chamomile citrus, which is my, um, the one I'm the most interested per personally, I find chamomile tea quite soothing and relaxing. It contains orange peels, chamomile flowers, rose hip peels, lemongrass, lemon myrtle, hibiscus flower, spearmint, natural flavors, and orange petals. The last one is called organic African nectar. It, or it contains organic rooibos, organic natural flavors, organic hibiscus, and organic marigold petals. That one's probably going to have a nice red color, considering the ingredient. This box contains only 15 pouches, which again, for the price and size, is quite too much for me. But, um, they look quite gorgeous, so I'm going to open the box and we'll open a pouch together and we can make noise and look at it. to try to do this as delicately as possible. So what did we get? We got orange dulce. And what's written on the little on the little paper is the name and the brew time because Certainty take less or longer time to have the optimal, so to speak, flavor. It also contains the web address and phone number. Now, this is cellophane. We'll make just a tiny bit of noise with that, too.
let's open this pouch. I'll be the one we'll put in our final project. And they're quite easy to open. Just pull out the pouch. And these beautiful looking pouch are made with silk and they basically created a crochet string here so it does look wonderful because they use whole leaves for the pocket which usually makes a better flavor than the regular one the regular tea because uh, cheaper tea use basically um, the crumbs of tea leaves whatever is left it's not necessarily bad it's just that the flavor tends to be a bit uh, less subtle and a bit bitter again to each their own I think it's a personal tasting but it does make a wonderful little sound when you rub both sides together being very careful that I don't crush the green leaves. I push them all at the bottom like this and I'm just rubbing the upper section together. The tea does smell quite nice. The others and scent are really nice. Um, but if the Earl Grey cup I had is any indication, it's okay tea. It's not nothing to call home about kind of thing. Uh, but some of the flavors are a bit more unusual and I think the person who's going to receive it is gonna enjoy exploring and trying this. Um, we both tend to like enjoying trying and testing new flavors together. Here I'm just moving the tea leaves gently. Again, I'm not crushing them, it's just to make the nice little rustling sound. Just gonna put it back on the cellophane right here until it's ready to go in this pocket that we're going to finish together now. So the glue is mostly dry. There's a tiny bit of tackiness, which is exactly what you want. And it dries completely clear. It'll look a bit wet when you apply it. But you shouldn't see anything. And um, this is the important part if you use rubber glue to try to align as precisely as possible before you press for good because it's really hard to fix since it's glued down again you can use regular glue stick just on, hold it a few seconds on each side to make sure it holds nice and tight Since rubber glue is this strong, I can already pop it open like this. I'm sorry if that was a tiny bit now, but it's so sturdy that I can do this already. And it's ready to put the orange dulce right here. So this one reads relax on the flap. And the quote reads bread and water can so easily be toast 
empty and the photo are using ginkgo leaves I took picture from under the ginkgo tree and the blue is the sky that was peeking through so let's put that in now these are not regular tea size pockets which was another disappointment for me they are a bit bigger a regular tea pocket should fit in here perfectly this one is a bit too big so I have to gently fold one of the side just a bit and then we'll just always have to adjust the first time you put an item in there because there's a 3D element to this I personally like to keep the little tag intact because this is a variety pack like I said and I want uh, the person to be able to know what they're drinking and the time it should brew but you can really easily um, cover this with a cute little paper or tag and hide the brand if you don't want the person to know where it's from or if you want to keep the look unified um, so that's what it looks from beginning to start to finish I'm going to read um, the quotes on each little pockets and then we'll put them away in the little gift box I got for this so these two read on the purple one hug in a mug and the quote is strange how a teapot can represent at the same time the comfort of solitude and the pleasure of company and I really like this quote because that's not they enjoy more than drinking a cup of tea with the person who's going to receive this gift but there's also a great joy into sitting in the afternoon with a nice cup of tea for a short break and just being calm and quiet with it this one reads tea time and the quote is I had a little tea party this afternoon at three. It was all small, three guests and all, just myself and me. On the already completed pockets, we have I love you with the quote If you're cold, till tea will warm you. If you're too heated, it will cool you. If you're depressed, it will cheer you. If you're excited, it will calm you. This one reads, you're my cup of tea. And the quote is, I read the tea leaves as if they were words left over from a conversation between two cups and the last one reads take a break tea would arrive the cake squatting on cushions of cream toast in a melting shawl of butter cups a gleam and a faint wisp of stream of steam rising from the teapot shawl so let's put them away into the box it's a simple for now undecorated 
balsa wood flask. Balsa wood is very thin as you can see and often used for crafts. This one was molded and shaped to create this tiny box and its lid and it's undecorated for now. If you would like me to decorate either this one or another one I have on camera, please let me know. And I just like the simplicity in the shape of this one. Let's make a bit of noise with it. Fill it up. And the box being full, its tonality changes quite a bit. The taps are much more muffled now and sharper, if that makes sense. Do you guys like tea? Or do you prefer coffee? or neither. And if you like tea, which one is your favorite? I tend to like jasmine tea and earl grey and a special tea blend called sleepy tea and that blend contains all sort of calming organic and wild-picked herb and it suits the mind so wonderfully That's all for today. I hope you have a wonderful day, a wonderful night, that you feel calm and relaxed. Sleep well, darling.